In case you didn't know, tomorrow afternoon, Ohio State and Michigan will meet on the gridiron for the 111th time. The Buckeyes already in the Big Ten title game, trying to keep playoff hopes alive. Wolverines need a win just to get bowl eligible. Mark has more on the greatest rivalry in college football. It is different around here. There, there's, I want to I wanna have some fun with it, but I also want the players to, when you say have fun, I'm not sure how to have fun. You know, it's how to have fun is to sing the fight song in the locker room after a win against your rival. That's how you have fun. Everything leads up to that fun. You know, I think what makes the Michigan State game such a big rivalry is when, you know, both teams are really good. And, uh, but, you know, the, the team up north game, uh, you know, I don't, regardless of records and all that, uh, it's a, you know, it's a big game regardless. And it's going to be a war, and uh, no matter what the records are. If you don't put all your focus and everything in to your preparation and your emotion for this game, then you're, as a coach, you're kind of missing it too. You know, I mean, it's, it's a fun week. And, and that doesn't make sense to some people probably. But when you have an opportunity, and for both teams, this is truly an honor and a privilege to play in this game or coach in this game because it is the game. And they're going. They're going to come out swinging. I, I mean, I, I would, I'll, I'll be the first one to tell you that. I mean, I watched them all year, and 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 uh, I mean, they're they're a good football team. They got athletes, and 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 they got mismatch problems for 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 um, everybody that they play. But at the same time, I mean, I I, I like our checkers better than theirs, and uh, and we're going to match or surpass their toughness, and uh, go out and handle the business that we got to take care of. Personally, I've uh, like you said earlier, I've grown to not like them very much ever since birth, you know. So every time I see her, every time I hear that fight song, every time I see those damn helmets, I just, not great feelings come up, I guess. You know, you get a, a feeling in your stomach and you just, you kind of want to go out there and you got a bad taste in your mouth. So um, that's the whole part of the rivalry. I mean, you got a lot of stuff. We don't like those colors. We don't, I mean, the whole deal, so. Two years ago, Jim Trussell was on hand as the 2002 Ohio State team was honored at the game this year, Coach Tressel perhaps will be on hand as Troy Smith is honored at halftime of the game. Mike Miller from WIMA 1150, our Buckeye Insider, joins us now. And Mike, earlier this week it was unclear if Coach Tressel was going to be there. Certainly, Troy Smith made his feelings clear. He would love to have Coach Tressel by his side Saturday as his number is enshrined. Well, I think it would be appropriate, uh, quite honestly, Mark, for good reason. Coach Tressel was everything. To Troy Smith. We recall back when Troy Smith was recruited in that 2002-2003 time period, he was one of the last recruits that came on board. He came in as a quote-unquote athlete, was part of the mix of the Glenville uh, boys that came in, including more prominently was Ted Ginn Jr. And of course, the way it turned out, Ted Ginn Jr. had a remarkable career, but surely Troy Smith did with the Heisman Trophy, and, and he'll be honored appropriately on Saturday. Well, and Youngstown State is now in search of a new head football coach, Jim <laughs> Trussell, president of Youngstown State. Word is he's going to try and get one of his guys in as the new football coach for Youngstown State, so maybe that's just be some more intrigue on Saturday <laughs> in a game that perhaps is missing a little intrigue, certainly some intrigue off the field, but... This Ohio State-Michigan matchup on paper, it looks like it should be an Ohio State blowout, but we know there are rarely, rarely blowouts in the game. Yeah, that's kind of, everybody's fallen back on that, but I think they are for good reason. There's so many times over the years with this series that the underdog has played very well uh, and has made it maybe their best performance of the year and has threatened to pull an upset. We've seen upsets in this contest. I think maybe the Buckeyes ultimately have been upset more as the favorite team than Michigan has over the years. So with that component out there and such a deep legacy of upsets, uh, I'm not taking anything for granted. The rise of JT Barrett has been well documented. Perhaps it's being overlooked as the decline of Devin Gardner. You go back to that game two years ago. Devin Gardner was coming on like a house on fire, and there was some thought that maybe Denard Robinson at quarterback had held De Devin Gardner back. But since that time, the last two years, Devin Gardner has regressed as a quarterback, and that's really hurt Michigan's offense. Yeah, I'm a little surprised, uh, actually, because Gardner – was the quarterback. It was like, wow, he get Denard Robinson out of here, let him play running back like he's doing now somewhat successfully in, in pro football. Let Devin Gardner be your quarterback. He can throw. He can run when he needs to. He's got good height and stature where he can see the field, but he just simply hasn't 
progressed uh, for, a, for a lot of reasons. I know last year he was damaged because the Michigan offensive line was really uh, second rate. And, and this year it's been a whole host of problems. I think also for Devin Gardner, he's, he's really had to face the issue of three different offenses in the last few years with coordinators. And I think that can be quite complicated and it has turned out to be a, a big negative for him career-wise. Ohio State has had problems with the rush defense the last couple of weeks. They've played really good running backs the last couple of weeks. Michigan does not have a really good running back. No, they do not. They they had a highly regarded guy like Derrick Green, but he's been out for a few weeks now. He's not going to be back for this game. Davion Smith is, is certainly capable, but he hasn't really proven himself over a long haul. I think that bodes well uh, for the Buckeye rush defense to really uh, stuff the Wolverines and force them to throw another area that we know Devin Gardner has struggled with dramatically. One place Ohio State's offense has struggled the last couple weeks has been turnovers. Mm -hmm. Certainly a lot of talk this week about we're going to grind them, we're going to coach the coaches up, make sure that guys are doing things right. You, you look back to the Indiana game, Michael Thomas didn't have the ball up high and secure. Yeah. Two interceptions by J.T. Barrett. Turnovers are one of those things where everybody talks about them, they make a huge difference. But when it comes down to it, a lot of times it's just plain luck. It is just plain luck a lot of times because who knows how, how the ball's going to get hit or what your situation as you land when you get blasted in some sort of a tackle situation. But I look at it more as it's hopefully the Buckeyes will get this out of their system here in weeks uh, 10 and 11 and, and now for week 12 and then heading into the Big Ten championship game next week, it'll be something they have worked on and improved and it won't be an issue for the next two games for Ohio State. That's surely what Coach Meyer and the staff is thinking. Your prediction for Saturday afternoon? Well, again, high hopes for the Buckeyes, Mark. I, I think really there's the Buckeyes have too many pluses as you match it up uh, with uh, Michigan. The Ohio State offense is seemingly not going to be stopped over a four-quarter game. Uh, the defense is better than it was last year. I like the Buckeyes pretty easily, something like 38-13. Wolverines have not won in Columbus since the year 2000.